So, I've been recently watching a lot of 8-Bit Guy and Lazy Game reviews, which, if you don't know, are tech channels focused on old vintage electronics and whatnot. Well, I've been interested in their MT32 reviews, which is an old Roland MIDI sound module. And I got to thinking, what if I had one? Well, they're ridiculously expensive for the real thing. But there are actually emulators, such as Munt, which is what I'll be using, to emulate the entire capability of the MT32. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up on your Mac. Sorry, no PC. Another YouTube channel already did a tutorial on how to set up Munt on a PC. But I haven't seen any tutorials on how to do it on a Mac. So, I got it working on my Mac, so I'm going to show you how to get it working on yours. It's all totally free, and you can run any games you want that, of course, have MT32 support. Let's get started. Um, my, uh, my drive just crashed. Perfect time to set up a tutorial. This light is blinding me. Even blinding my camera. So first, I've made a checklist in Google Keep of everything that we'll have to do in order to emulate MT32 with DOSBox. This process might differ a little bit for PCs, but I'm going to go through exactly what you need to do on a Mac. First thing that you'll need to do is, of course, download DOSBox if you haven't already. You can simply go to DOSBox dot com and download it from this website. If I haven't already mentioned, you should probably be watching this video in 1080p, unless some things might not show up right. Just download it from SourceForge, and that's that. Next you need to download Munt. Um, check that off. Next you need to uh, download Munt, and you can simply just type in Munt MT32 into Google. It'll be the sourceforge.net link right here. And just download it. It's for um, a bunch of different operating systems. So once that's downloaded, that's it. Next one is source the MT32 ROMs. So these are ROM files that, to my knowledge, are copyrighted. This may or may not change. But as of now, or the information that I've acquired, these ROMs are actually copyrighted, and it's illegal to um, share them with any other people. I have managed to get a copy of the ROMs, but I'm not going to exactly tell you how I did it. So you'll probably have to just Google for MT32 ROMs or something. But I have this folder in my Google Drive that contains CM32L ROMs as well as these MT32 control and PCM ROM files. This is the folder that I will be referencing to. You just like on a Google, Doc, Google Drive Drive Docs, and then this folder. So once you've installed Munt, you need to set it up. So I've already dragged it into my Applications folder. It's this application called MT32 EMU, stands for Emulator. So I'm going to open that up. See, it's just a blank window here. I'm going to come up to Options. Dang it. Go up to Options and ROM Configuration. So you can see I've already changed the ROM directory to that fo to that folder that I was already in. Just click the three dots and you can open your folder. So there's a, you have select MT32 PCM ROM file. And then you can either select the V107 or the Blue Ridge Control ROM. I set it on the patched ROM. Seems to work. And so what I've figured out, this is the tricky part with Macs, that you don't really have to do this on a PC. You have to come up to Tools and create a new MIDI port. Just keep the default thing. So there you go. That's Synth 1. So this will uh, actually be MIDI Config 0, as you will see in a second. So that is Munt all set up. Now you need to set up DOSBox. This is a weird thing with... Mac sets. I think it's way different for PCs. So I'm simply going to search in this Mac, search for DOSBox. Of course, come up with the application. See, it's Mac OS X. That's the name of my drive. Uh, applications and DOSBox. There's also this file here that will be in your user's library preferences. And it's just a simple text file. So open that up with uh, text edit or whatever you have. Uh, I think you can open it with other stuff too, but in text edit's easy. There's a lot of uh, verbose looking text here. Make that quite big. Again, probably should watch at 1080p so that you can see all the detail that I'm seeing. 
So scroll down a little bit until you find this MIDI section here. Now this is the thing that you want to change. Now this might look like this when you first open this preferences file. Uh, the MPU 401, if you didn't already know, is a interface box for the actual MT32 that allows the MT32 with traditional MIDI ports to connect to a computer. And I just keep that on intelligent, seems to work fine in intelligent mode. And then for the MIDI device, it will, by default, it'll say core audio. Or technically, I think this might say default for newer versions of DOS. So the MIDI device will actually say default, and mess that up a little bit. Used to say core audio, but I think an update changed it to default. So what you'll need to do is change default to core MIDI, which will allow the uh, audio, technically not audio, technically MIDI samples, to be outputted through MIDI, which the, um, the uh, MT32 emulator actually you know, uses standard MIDI, which um, all computers are capable of. So I'm going to go back to this thing. You need to change that to core MIDI. Now one thing that I had to do a little bit of an experimentation to figure out is the MIDI config ID. Normally it'll be like 0, 1, or 2. At first I tried 1. That did not seem to work. I have these Sennheiser wireless TV headphones that only turn on when there's audio heard, and they didn't turn on at all. So one does not work. I saw an article that said two. That also did not work. What I found is that it's actually zero. If you make a new MIDI port, the uh, MT32 EMU port one, the one is actually MIDI config zero. You might be able to change the properties, but I've not figured out how to do that. And I'm just looking through quickly to see if there's anything else you need to change. Um, you might also just want to look through this configuration file, see if there's anything you would like to change for your specific game or anything, or to configure a different type of machine that you're running DOSBox on. These are all just the standard settings that came with DOSBox when I downloaded it yesterday. So I'm going to quit out of that and save the changes. So now all the settings should have been configured properly. So now I'm going to open DOSBox here. And as you can see, I've already um, put an auto executive um, thing here that will say mount C, weird squiggly thing, slash DOS. That's because I have a, dang it, I have a directory in my home folder that is a folder called DOS. And this simply is just users. That will be my C drive directory, so I can just type C colon. And now we're in the C drive, which is technically the DOS folder. If I type DIR, it'll show me the folders that I have in there right now. Now the thing with Max is they create this DS store file. You completely ignore that. Just something that the Mac has. I don't know if PCs have that, I've never even seen it. But all these are actually folders, so I have uh, Secret of Monkey Island, the installed version, and then Space Quest 4, which is what I will be opening. So you have to type it in exactly how it shows here. Space Q squiggly thing 1. You have to type that in here. I almost forgot. I, did, I do this all the time. You have to do CD space to get into a folder. Now if I do DIR here, not DIR slash, see all the list of files that are in that folder and their sizes and creation date and whatnot. I'm going to go install.exe so I'm simply going to type in install to run the installer program. Enter. So you can see um, selected my graphics to be the standard graphics for this game. Music is the MT32. Yeah, that seems all correct. I don't have a joystick, I'm just going to use the standard mouse thing and as much memory and as much memory as possible. Just going to go in there. And now I'm out of the installer. So now if I do directory on this folder, you can see there's a, another exe file that is SCIV. So I'm simply going to type in SCIV to open the file. Now, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the MT32 emulator um, thing over there. 
in this window right here, just so that you can see what will be shown on the MT32 screen as it would be on a real MT32. So I'm going to turn on my headphones here. So I'm going to start the program and you see the MT32 synth start up. Wait for the static to clear up. And you can't hear it unfortunately because these headphones aren't very loud enough. I'm holding them up to the microphone right now and you can't really hear anything. But the music is actually playing. You can see the MIDI message thing going across there. And you can also see the little things blinking away on the MT32 screen, which means the audio is working correctly. So I'm going to um, turn off DOSBox and I'm going to route the audio through Soundflower so that you can hear what it actually sounds like. Escape and then quit. That is how you play MT32 music on your Mac. Thank you for watching.